Well, 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 would you look who's back? Lex here, and uh, I apologize for the long leave of absence, but now I'm back and we have plenty to talk about. Recession, inflation, crypto crashes, everything that's been going on is, well, putting even myself on edge sometimes. So we have a lot to talk about and I have a bit of a longer video, so we're gonna get to it right away. Let's go. Okay, so I got a bit of a presentation open here for you that I've made, which covers most of the basic points that I wanna talk about in this video. Of course, we are talking about recession and inflation in the 2022 markets. Of course, it's all doom and gloom, and uh, I wanna try to cut through that and just speak about the facts, speak about the things that we know and not get into the fear or the hope or whatever it is that people are feeling in the markets right now because when you look at the fear and greed indexes, we are deep into fear territory for both crypto and the stock market. So what I'm trying to do here is a bit of a more realistic objective approach and we'll see if uh, I achieved that. So let's get started. First of all, what are we looking at? We are looking at a couple of things. My intro is going to be about the perfect storm, basically the factors that have gotten us to the current situation. What has led us here and uh, why are we feeling the pain right now? Next, we'll look at some news, basically what people are saying out there, what people like uh, Elon Musk, the World Bank, whatever, what's their opinion, what are they thinking, what are they saying, should we trust them or not? Next, I want to take a look at the actual inflation data that uh, came out for the last few months as well as May. My own expectations, kind of my opinion on how I'm navigating this situation. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do. And uh, obviously, you shouldn't follow exactly my plan. You should always do your own research. You should always make your own conclusions because this video is not financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do. This is just me doing me, what I'm looking at, what I'm doing. If it gives you pointers on where to look at for yourself and how to make your own decisions, that's great. But do not do exactly what I do. Always make up your own mind because at the end of the day, it's your own responsibility. And then uh, I'll do a short summary. Now, if that sounds very good to you, I would appreciate the like button because it helps out the channel and the videos as well. And it helps me know that this video has been helpful and useful to you. So let's get into it. We are in what I would consider and many others also would consider the perfect storm. We were still dealing with issues from COVID, all the money printing, the supply shock in some goods, there was a chip shortage, there was problems with logistics from China. There was, of course, a general economic reset following the pandemic and the lockdown, which many people were still recovering from and are actually even now recovering from when the war in Ukraine hit us. Now, I'm in Europe and that has been a particular shock. It has felt, we have felt the implications of the war the strongest, I would say. Especially when it comes to energy and fuel costs, Europe has been the one that is the most affected. And those sectors are the ones that have been very strongly contributing to inflationary factors that we are seeing right now, because obviously, when you have a high cost of fuel or a high energy cost, that impacts everything. High energy cost is never a good thing for the whole economy. Obviously, because of the war, we have further supply shock compounding from COVID because we have many basic and raw materials which are coming from Ukraine, which will be coming no longer. Same applies to Russia. These countries are a huge exporter of 
wheat, corn, just basic foodstuffs, as well as many things like construction materials, wood, metal, heavy industry, which now has been disrupted. And now obviously people want to spend, they want to live, they want to go on holidays, they want to enjoy their life. So they, the demand for goods and services is there. The trouble is because of COVID, because of the war in Ukraine, the supply is not there. And that leads obviously to a sharp increase and sudden increase in prices, which is what we call inflation. And obviously with the war in Ukraine, we have a lot of uncertainty on where the war is headed. Is it likely to expand? Is it going to impact neighboring countries directly? These are all concerns which also have an implication in the economy, also have an impl implication on how people and where people spend their money. And of course, are a strong cause of the recession fears that we have all over the globe. Uncertainty is never a good thing when it comes to economics and investing. And of course, we have inflation and stagflation. I mean, we will, we will take a look at Google Trends later, but there is a clear spike for the search terms inflation and stagflation when you look at Google Trends. And that unfortunately is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because when businesses expect inflation, they are likely to raise prices just so they can have a buffer of their profit margin, which of course causes further inflation and it has a rippling effect throughout the whole economy. Basically, it's kind of like a downward spiral. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you expect inflation, it's likely to occur. Whatever you're afraid of, it usually occurs. And that's how it works in the economy as well. So the central banks need to be really active in managing inflation expectations because the expectations themselves are also a strong drive are also a strong driver of inflation itself. We have central bank policy. Obviously, it was very loose. There was a lot of money printing in COVID. I believe, I'm not sure about this number, but over 40% of the supply of the US dollar was created during COVID. The euro, of course, followed suit and there was a lot of printing as well. Now, that contributes to, obviously, inflation, monetary supply, more money in the economy. And central banks now would benefit in being aggressive to curb inflation, meaning that if they raise interest rates, that should slow down inflation. But they are very careful in, they are basically trying very hard not to throw the markets and the economy in a recession because of those interest rates hikes. But it might be very difficult to do that. And my thought process is that those rate hikes will certainly cause a recession, but we need, we actually need that recession in order to fight inflation. We need people to slow down their consumption. We need people to stop spending a little bit so that we can get inflation under control. And that means that recession is actually a good thing when it comes to, to the long-term health of the economy. However, it's a very difficult thing for many people and short term, a lot of businesses, a lot of individuals might go bankrupt. So that is kind of the balancing game that central banks have to play in order to control the economic situation. So you can see how all of these factors combine to kind of make a perfect economic storm, which is hitting us right now. It's causing a lot of fear it's causing a lot of worry people are losing money businesses are going under it's a massive deleveraging event it's a massive market shock but all these factors combined you know sooner or later something has got to give and it looks like it has started and that is kind of our next slide i'm gonna pause the presentation for a bit because I want to take a look at a bit of news. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have people like Elon Musk who 
is very adamantly hinting that a recession is coming. And it's not just him, it's many other people, but his opinion is that, well, he said in a couple of tweets that he has a very bad feeling about the economy. He has also said that, in his opinion, a recession would be a good thing because, in his words, it has been raining money on fools for far too long. There are a lot of businesses who are basically, well, zombies that they need to die in order to clear and make way for new companies to come to make new products to refresh the whole economy. Yeah, this is where he says, yeah, it's a good thing. It's been raining fools on some bankruptcy. Some bankruptcies need to happen. Of course, obviously, this is a very controversial opinion. So he thinks this recession is going to last about 12 to 18 months. Whether you should believe him or not, I don't know, because honestly, um, Elon has a history of, well, let's say questionable market behavior. He has been quite frankly manipulating crypto markets when it comes to Dogecoin. And that was during last year. He has tweeted specific tweets which have boosted or dropped the prices of several crypto assets. Now, whether he can do the same in stocks, I doubt in the same capacity. Uh, plus, it's much more risky that the SEC might react. But I am sure that uh, he might have, um, let's say, interest, at least to some extent, in saying this. I mean, uh, if he has prepared for a recession, that means he's going to have spare cash to deploy for Tesla or for himself to purchase investments. And in in that view, a recession would be in his favor. So if he's saying an inflation is happening, he's basically moving the, the needle towards that said recession, a sort of manipulating the markets so he can then invest and buy stuff cheaper. That doesn't mean he's wrong, but you should bear in mind that you don't always listen to what the news and the media says, especially when it comes to people like that. We also have Jamie Dimon, who is the CEO of JP Morgan Chase. He has said, brace yourself for an economic hurricane caused by the Fed and the Ukraine war. This guy is also pretty sketchy when it comes to his opinions. Uh, for example, he was really, really bearish on crypto. He at one point called crypto absolutely worthless. Uh, a couple of months back, he kind of changed his tune on that, saying, well, we might start offering our clients Bitcoin products. So whatever he says publicly, you should take with a grain of salt. But nevertheless, he is also agreeing that, well, things are not looking so good. Basically, he said, well, central banks don't have a choice. There's too much liquidity in the system, meaning that there is too much money. So they need to do QT, which means quantitative tightening, which means that they are basically taking money out of the markets into their reserves. Of course, many other economists are predicting a recession next year. Honestly, I think a recession is already here, but we'll comment on that later. And uh, yeah, it's just recession, 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 inflation, inflation all over in the news. And like I said, things like that are, are a self for are a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more people expect it, the more likely it is. And as well, the World Bank also said that most countries are not going to avoid a recession and that they warn of a possible stagflation situation as well. What stagflation may basically means is an economic, economic situation where inflation is high, but we are also not seeing growth in GDP, which means that the economy itself is not growing, it's not developing. However, we are still seeing inflation and that's kind of a very tricky spot to be because uh, it can take a while to fix that. Growth seems to be already slowing in some sectors and uh, yeah, overall 2023, not looking good. So I also wanted to show you Google Trends, this is a really interesting website, maybe a lot of you know it, where you just put in a word, any topic you might be interested in, and check the search terms for that topic. 
and we have the interest over time here for the word recession. You can see how well basically since the beginning of this year the term has been peaking hard. Back in late May that term hit 89 which 100 is basically like peak popularity. 89 is pretty damn close to peak popularity as well. Then it dropped down because, well, the markets were doing okay. And now we are going to be back up. Probably this month we're going to hit 100 because, uh, well, we can see here an estimate because we don't have the full data yet. But the beginning of the month has been very strong for this trend. And uh, obviously the strongest interest for this search term has been in the US, followed by Singapore, Ireland, Canada and Austria. Another interesting thing that has been going quite up is stagflation. We can see it's had like a 160% increase in the interest of that term. Pretty strong. We can take a look at it now. There we go. Stagflation. Doing all right. A bit higher than obviously last year. But then in the beginning of June, boom, we're almost going to hit 100 we're going to max it out again. So like I said, these things tend to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the interest in these topics is very strong. So strong, in fact, that someone as random as freaking Cardi B comments about when are we going to announce that we are into a recession? Obviously, Cardi B has nothing to do with economics. She doesn't know shit, but she's still commenting on this. So it means that the fears of recession, the fears of inflation are very common right now. That's the news, basically. What's next? Well, let's, like, let's take a look at the all important inflation data. So this is the year over year inflation rate starting from the beginning of this year. We have basically had increases since the start of the year from 7.5% to 7.9% to 8.5%. And then April data came in lower than expected. And people were like, okay, you know, inflation is starting to kind of, it has already peaked. It's going to flatten out. You know, it's not going to be as bad. Maybe it will start heading down. So we are in a good place. Well, all of that changed when the data for May came out because then we have 8.6% and that came out a few days ago and the markets have been bloody red all over. So obviously 8.6 was well above expectation because we expected to remain flat like April or go down a little bit more. That didn't happen. So a huge sell off followed. So what's my opinion on all of this? Well, and I'm saying again, not financial advice. This is just my opinion. I am not an economist. I am not a extreme. I, am, I don't define myself as an expert in this field. I just have a very strong interest in it. So do not take my word as law. But in my opinion, recession is already here because when we know when it gets confirmed, basically recession is a lagging indicator. What that means is by the time that it's confirmed that we are in a recession, we probably would have been through the worst of it because we need at least two quarters where GDP has been on negative growth. We've already had one quarter. If we have the next quarter, it means recession is here. Highly likely that markets are already starting to price in recession as a certain thing. And uh, my thought is that whatever downtrend we are going to see, most likely it's not going to be as severe as March 2020, where, where markets crashed more than 34-35%. Now, obviously, that event was very sudden and very fast here likely won't be so sudden, won't be so fast, but it will be longer. Uh, I happen to agree with Elon Musk. I think that this period could take at least a year to go through. So likely until the end of 2023, we would be seeing 
some negative economic news, recession, inflation, etc. So further downside, currently we are about, I think, 19% down in the S&P 500, which is just shy of bear market territory for the S&P 500. Likely we will go into bear market territory sometimes during the summer. I don't expect that we will be going more than minus 25, at worst minus 30% on the S&P. Like I said, could be wrong, been wrong plenty of times before, but uh, yeah, that's my idea. I'm thinking this is gonna be longer than COVID but it's not going to be as severe, as immediate. But we'll see. This might age really badly because, like I said, been wrong before. It's all doom and gloom, but you got to look at the bright side of it, even though it's very difficult to look at the bright side of it. You know, everyone says buy low, sell high, but when the prices are actually low, because of the news, because of the way people are behaving, because of all the doom and gloom, it's actually very difficult to buy when prices are low because people are always gonna think, oh, it's gonna go lower, it's gonna get even worse, it's gonna, we're gonna lose all our money, etc., etc. But there is a silver lining, and that is that opportunity is massive. I mean, some major tech companies which are still fundamentally quite solid, are down big. And uh, if I had spare cash, I would be buying a lot of them right now. Unfortunately, well, I do have some, but not that much. Um, Netflix down 69%, Facebook down 45%, Google down 23%, the Nasdaq index down 27%. Like I said, S&P down about 19, I believe. Bitcoin down more than 40%. This is a huge opportune moment because many people have been waiting to buy the dip, to buy when stuff is cheap. Well, guess what? It's cheap now. Are you actually going to be buying or are you going to be sitting on the sidelines thinking, oh, you know, it's going to go more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy at a lower price. No, you should start buying now. If you have cash, I would be buying. And I am buying, actually. So huge, huge, huge opportunities when it comes to tech, when it comes to crypto. Well, today has been a horrible day for crypto as well, but we'll comment on that in a later video. So what's the plan? What's my plan? I don't know what your plan is, but I'm going to talk about my plan. Number one, don't panic. Huge, huge point. Don't panic. Keep dollar cost averaging. Keep buying a little bit every few weeks or months or whatever. Don't go all in at once. Well, a lot of people, like I said, waiting for that perfect moment where you got like a ton of money, you, you're waiting for that company to be at like minus 40 whatever percent and you're gonna put everything inside there. Bad idea because obviously you might never get to your target or you might get to your target and then your company might keep going down and you've obviously blown all of your ammunition. So dollar cost averaging, buy in regular periods, regardless of the price in equal amounts, chunks of cash, whatever. If you have a salary, when your salary comes in, you invest, I don't know, $500 every month, whatever it is, that's the best way. Dollar cost averaging is statistically the best way. And I've done videos on that before. You can find it here. Like I said, this is an amazing time to get in the markets. This is a very good time to be buying some of these beat up stocks, to be buying crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Great time. A lot of people have been waiting for this moment for a long time, but go. I mean, invest now. If, you, if you've always wanted to invest, start now. Stick to your plan. You should have a plan. You should stick to it. And uh, if you have a plan and you stick to it, well, obviously you have no reason to panic. If your plan is good, you should have no reason to panic. Cut back on unnecessary spending. Now, obviously, a lot of us want to have available cash to spend on investments. So the more cash that you can save to invest, the better. 
Never invest the money that you need immediately. If you need money to, well, basically live, to buy food, to pay rent, to take care of your family, don't invest that money. Don't invest things that you need immediately. And the last but not least, be patient. This, well, you need to be aware here with all these things I'm talking to myself as well, because this is my journey as well. I'm, I'm in it with you. But patience this could take two three four five years to blow over and uh in that time things can get so crushingly bad but we need to be patient and we need to remember the big picture and just keep going small steps step by step keep going that's about it for the plan so summary pain is ahead it's likely to get really difficult. It's likely to get really painful. Bear markets and recessions can be absolutely soul crushing. Like it can feel like you're about to lose everything. And uh, I am not gonna lie, I am not looking forward to that moment, but I am trying to be mentally prepared that it could happen. Of course, it is an amazing time to be learning a lot about the markets, to be really hands-on with investing, to be really hands-on with your research, to be figuring stuff out, to be buying different things, to be experimenting, to be learning, because that potentially can earn you a lot in the future once this all blows over. It could turn out that this is a rare, rare opportunity. Because let's face it, when is in the last let's say in the last 10 years, we've really had maybe two times where the market has dropped more than 20%. That's it. There hasn't been a huge opportunity to buy in at lower prices. You know, looking back, it's easy to say, well, I should have done that. I should have bought then. I should have done this, whatever. Take advantage of this opportunity as much as you can, as, as much as you kind of evaluate for yourself to be appropriate. And I know that buying now is extremely hard because I can feel it myself as well. Sometimes I hesitate, you know, should I put in money now? It still keeps going down. Buying in difficult times is hard. Like people, people make it seem easy, you know, just, just buy a dip, you know, buy a dip. No, it's very, very hard, but that's why it is rewarding there wouldn't be such huge opportunities for gains if it was easy, if everyone could do it. So keep these, these things in mind and uh, good luck. Basically, that's it from what I wanted to talk about today. I hope this video has provided you some value. I will be making a next video shortly. I hope it would be able to be uploaded before next week because I should really, <laughs> let's say, tighten the schedule when it comes to uploading in this tough period. But just wanted to say, uh, you are not alone. Basically, I'm still in this. I'm still doing this. I haven't sold anything, really. Have I, have I lost a lot? Yes, I have, but I have also accepted that this is part of being in the markets. Events like this happen and uh, we need to be level headed. We need to be able to understand them. We need to be patient and we need to just keep following our long term plans. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, this is a reminder again to smash the like button and uh, thank you again. I'll see you next video where we will probably talk about what the hell happened in crypto. Till next time, bye-bye.